The smell of bread baking definitely sends me right back to the uh, wood oven stove in my grandmother's kitchen and uh, the gas lamps and no electricity and being in Africa and that, that kind of history at that time. I think my perfect bread moment is when I get home from school. That's probably what springs to mind and probably getting back through a whole loaf, just slice after slice in the toaster, just with butter. Because when you get home from school you starve probably why I'm here today. My favorite bread is chapati. Light chapati is called Romali chapati. Oh, wonderful. There's Arabic people so much like sesame naan. Kurdish people like plain naan. And English and that, I like the garlic butter. Yeah, African people. Yeah, African like. people like bread with garlic. The fact that we couldn't sell for ketchup holes in there has actually turned out quite well for us. We had people bring them back and they complained that there was holes in the, in the bread and uh, it didn't toast that well and it didn't, they couldn't put the butter on and everything and uh, I said to them well you know it's supposed to have holes in it but it wasn't quite what the customers wanted so basically I came up with a, uh, a compromise of a, a more of a traditional method of making it but with as much as the focaccia flavours as possible and, and that's what we came up with it's actually turned out to be our most popular bread My mother me dice sempre Il pane è come me, perché ami più il pane che me, quindi uh, lo amo. I've had everyone um, on my courses from mum who wanted to get her son to eat wholemeal bread and she just couldn't make him to eat something a bit more healthy. So she thought, well, if I make it myself, maybe he might actually um, enjoy eating it. And um, she thanked me because he got involved as well and uh, baked the bread with her. Um, her son now enjoys eating the wholemeal bread, but he goes to school and he's just so um, excited about telling all his friends that he bakes bread at home and he's only nine, so that's a really nice story. This is prototype number nine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I? I brought one along as well. You Shall did? I, I, okay, I yeah. One? Um, a lot of people in the creative industries have, by coincidence, an interest in cooking and food and culture because they're all linked, creativity, cooking, and culture. Our bakery started in an old squatted post office by a German guy who'd come over and was wanting to fund his studies so he decided he wanted to set up a bakery and make some decent bread because he couldn't find any decent bread in London at the time. So he set about getting together the things he needed which he found on the street basically. He went out and found an old gas oven and plumbed it into his uh, squat and he got himself a bath which he was going to mix up his bread in and he made himself a, a, a sort of very basic meal out of a coffee grinder and um, using the engine or the motor from a washing machine, milled his own flour. So that was how our bakery started all those years ago. I'm proud to, to have this opportunity to share the food of my country with uh, all the people in the UK, in London, that you know that is... Uh, I, there are a lot of foreigners. The children themselves have interesting recipes in their families for, because of where they all come from. So, you know, you try and bring that out and, and encourage people to be proud about their own heritage um, and, you know, not just, not just sort of be satisfied with what Tesco gives you, you know. I like flipping egg bread. Yeah, yeah, garlic yeah. bread. Garlic bread. I love seedy bread. Nam bread. Nam bread. There are thousands of different types of old wheat varieties, you know, that were grown by our ancestors, and they were grown for for good reason because they're all a little bit different genetically. Maybe ripened a day different or a couple of days different. It was different heights. Some had deep root systems, some had shallow root systems. Some were good in cold weather. Some were good in dry weather. Some were good in wet weather. And in diversity, there is strength, just as in society, I would say. So of what I'm trying to do is create populations of cereals that are very adapted to climate change. I mean, we're living in, a, obviously, a period of crisis, unpredictable weather, terrible weather. And 
by growing a population like that, you're hedging your bets. Whatever the weather. Um, but it's also, I suppose I've had this desire to reintroduce these ancient wheats because I think we're missing a trick here. We're missing flavor. We're missing texture. We're missing the taste of the past, I suppose you could say it in, in, in a way. I don't put anything on it. I just eat it plain. I love pane. Something we will eat in, as the breakfast. Mostly, uh, I like it brown bread. I love bread! 